On 16th June 1964, an innocuous insertion in the allocation of business rules 1961 gave a statutory status to the newly minted Prime Minister's Secretariat. Now, the mandate given to it was, quote, to provide secretarial assistance to the Prime Minister, unquote. However, this little innocuous statement diminished forever the role of the cabinet secretary, which had hitherto been performing the role of coordination amongst different ministries uh, and was therefore playing a key role in the decisions regarding the appointment of the senior most people in various ministries and departments. And it is ironical indeed that the PMO, which is today uh, being accused of giving India a de facto presidential form of government, was actually created by the most consultative of all prime ministers, Lal Bahadur Shastri. Now, the first incumbent, the first incumbent chosen for this office was the ICS Mandarin, L.K. Chha, who was, of course, brilliant, efficient, competent, hardworking, and also in sync with Shastri's economic and political views, especially with regard to curtailing the size of the fourth five-year plan, reduction of fiscal deficit, and improved relationship with the United States of America. He enjoyed the complete trust of the Prime Minister and also had a fairly good rapport with Dharam Veera, uh, who was the Cabinet Secretary and senior to him in the ICS. But soon the equation changed because he became more powerful than Dharamvira himself. Now, Inder Malhotra was a keen observer of the power games at Raisana Hill, wrote, and I quote, within a month after becoming the prime minister and barely a few days after recovering from his illness, Lal Bahadur Shastri created another sensation. He set up a new institution in the governmental system that almost immediately and perhaps inevitably became a new power center, unquote. Now, how did Shastri select Cha? Well, the fact is that Shastri had seen Jha's functioning in the Economic Affairs Ministry. Let's recall that Shastri had been the Industries Minister, the Commerce and Industries Minister of India before he was the Home Minister, and he was quite impressed with him. But he was equally impressed with L.P. Singh, who was about to become the Home Secretary. And actually, Shastri wanted both L.K. Cha and L.P. Singh to be in the PMS. But Cha was quite sharp, quite smart. He ensured that L.P. Singh is not relieved by Guzari Lal Nanda, who was then the Home Minister. And therefore, it avoided a parallel power center in the PMS. And therefore, he had two joint secretaries with him, Rajeshwar Prasad and C.P. Srivastava, both of whom were at the level of joint secretaries. And both of them have written their accounts on their years with Lal Bahadur Shastri. CPS has written the book Lal Bahadur Shastri, Prime Minister of India, 1964 to 66. And the subheading is A Life of Truth in Politics. Likewise, Rajeshwar Prasad has written Days with Lal Bahadur, glimpses from the last seven years, because Rajeshwar Prasad had worked with him as his PS in his earlier appointments as well. Uh, talking of those days, uh, you know, uh, there was this famous author called Michael Pritchard, who wrote this book, uh, Nehru's Mantle, The Politics of Succession in India. And he is saying, and, and, and I quote uh, Pritchard when he says, uh, there is ample evidence to indicate that the Prime Minister's Secretariat to the forceful personality of L.K. Jha has become a major power center in all India politics, an interest group in its own right. It has exerted pressure on many issues, notably in the vital spheres of economic policy and foreign affairs. Uh, uh, this was also the impression which the English press and foreign correspondents carried for in tone and temperament, they were far more comfortable with him rather than with the homespun Shastri, uh, who did not 
women who preferred to speak in Hindi I did not cut any jokes in the Oxbridge accent. Uh, if we were to use contemporary lingo, LK Cha was more of the Khan Market IAC gang, whereas Shastri was the quintessential Gandhian. Uh, Srivastava, however, feels that Bricher had probably overestimated Cha's role as the PM's advisor and sounding board, especially when it came to issues relating to agriculture and public finance. Uh, Bricher had uh, said that the primary shift in Shastri's agricultural policy came about on the advice of Mr. Cha, but this is an obvious exaggeration because uh, Shastri had decided to appoint Subramanian as the, as the agriculture and food minister uh, from day one itself, that is from 9th June itself. As soon as he was sworn in as the prime minister, Mr. Subramanian uh, had been sworn in as the agriculture and food minister as well. Uh, but uh, to be fair to Cha, uh, recollecting his tenure with Shastri, Cha's own statement is as follows. He says, and I quote, As I look back to those eventful months, which already belong to history, my most outstanding of him is that he combined in a unique way what might superficially seem to be two contradictory qualities. One, he was a man of deep humility, ready to listen to others, valuing their opinion and advice, seeking at all times to learn rather than to lay down the law. But he was also a man of deep conviction. He knew his mind and he formed his own decisions after pondering over all the points of view presented to him. But once he had made up his mind, he would not waver, but stand steadfast on the position that he had taken. Uh, Cha goes on to add, and I quote again, because of his modesty, there were many who thought that, uh, you know, his advisors shaped his policies. And this impression got strengthened because his secretariat was certainly much larger than that of Nehru and considered and, and consisted of more senior people. Uh, unquote. Now, N.K. Singh, you know, we all know of N.K. Singh. Uh, and he has recalled in his memoir, Portraits of Par, that he had accompanied his father, T.P. Singh, also from the ICS, to congratulate Shah on his appointment as the secretary to the PM. And he told him, congratulations, LK, for two things. First, for the high office you now occupy. And second, for this remarkable coup which has now permanently destroyed the traditional ethos of the civil services establishment, unquote. LK was quick to quip. How can you say that? I have a profound respect for the cabinet secretary. But T.P. Singh retorted, LK, let's not get into semantics. Time will tell, unquote. This structural change permanently eroded the primacy of the cabinet secretary and as T.P. Singh said, it was obvious that the primacy of the position of the cabinet secretary emanated from his being the last person to tender any advice to the PM. And that from here onwards, as secretary to the PM, LK's note would be the last one to be read by the prime minister. Unquote. And this is what made the qualitative and structural difference in the hierarchy of the civil services establishment. Therefore, as was expected, within the first weeks itself, there was intense and widespread resentment, especially from the cabinet secretariat, who until then was what we could call the headmaster of the civil service. And Cha added fuel to the fire by extending his control from economic affairs and domestic policy to foreign affairs as well. Although he was not very experienced in this field, but he had been part of the PM's entourage. Therefore, in 1964, on the occasion of Shastri's first foray into international affairs, which is the Non-Aligned Movement Conference at Cairo, as was the practice, the External Affairs Ministry prepared a draft speech for the PM. But the PMS also prepared a draft speech for Shastriji, and Shastri chose to accept the draft, which was prepared by Cha, which obviously was not to the liking of the Ministry of External Affairs. Because the fact is that in Nehru's time, the Secretary General of the Foreign Office 
considered himself to be at par with the cabinet secretary. And often, Nehru would lean to the foreign office for advice. But in a clear snuff to the foreign office, the six-member high part committee of secretaries on external affairs that was created by Cha, he had two people from economic ministries, uh, others were the cabinet secretary, defense secretary, the secretary to the prime minister, you know. And also, interestingly, the home secretary was excluded. After the death of Shastri, he continued to serve in the secretariat, but the trust was gone. And P. N. Haksar, whose life was intertwined with that of Mrs. Gandhi, became the head of the prime minister's secretariat. And their relationship is best explained by Jairam Ramesh, in a scholarly study on the subject. But for this, we have to wait for the next episode. Thank you.